disorienting to me. Like it's a different room. I feel like I'm in Narnia. My name is Trish Carter, and it is my absolute honor and pleasure to serve Cedarfield as a chaplain. One of the job perks I tell my friends about working at Cedarfield, one is that I get to keep fit by walking so many places around campus. I consider that a job perk. Another perk of this job is that anytime I'm going from point A to point B on this campus, I am sure to see beauty. I just walked from my office over to the healthcare building and saw so many beautiful blooming flowers. If you are having trouble finding beauty at Cedarfield, I invite you to take a walk with me and we will find it. I wanted to share with you a traditional Navajo prayer that's called, As I Walk with Beauty. As I walk, as I walk, the universe is walking with me. In beauty, it walks before me. In beauty, it walks behind me. In beauty, it walks below me. In beauty, it walks above me. Beauty is on every side. Welcome to a beautiful new space. Well, hello. <laughs> so this is actually our plan B. So I will share that with you, knowing that we might hit a couple of hiccups today, but I have the team around me to keep me on, on track and keep us where we're going. As you all know, I'm a huge baseball, baseball fan. Has anybody ever seen the movie Field of Dreams? If you build it, they will come. <laughs> Thank you for coming. So our plan actually for today was to meet in our break room in healthcare because we're not 100% complete in the fellowship hall, but we're, we're pretty close to being complete and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, for those of you who don't know, and there'll be a little bit more information about it later in the presentation, we have some COVID on that side of the building. So although we know that things aren't exactly the way we wanted it in here, we felt like this was the best option. And I thank the gentleman in the back of the room who made this happen for us. Really appreciate it, guys. We'll introduce the world. So as I stand here and look out at everybody, the room actually has that new car smell. Does everyone smell it? I think it's the chairs. Um, and I hope you like them. At the end, let me know if they're comfortable. Our Fresh Eyes Committee worked with us to do all of the selections in here and did a wonderful job. If you are a member of that committee, would you mind standing? You might be shy, but not so shy. <laughs> Thank you all so much for the input. Um, and again, there, there's still a few tweaks, and we'll talk a little bit about them uh, later on in, in the presentation today. As you know, in all town meetings, uh, we start with good news. Who has good news to share with us today? There has to be some good news. Okay, hold on one second. Thank you very much. <coughs> yeah, this one. 
Einstein. Thanks, 
Award was announced and it went to Long and Foster Realty. So I looked at my little trophy that said Chesterfield County on it and I said, great job, I'm gonna be proud of this and, and be happy about this. Fast forward about 24 hours later, I'm at a meeting at our corporate office with Caitlin and I get a text message saying, I am so proud of you, great job. I said, what is this about? It was from a friend who happened to open the Times Dispatch that morning, which I didn't, announcing the fact that Cedarfield had won second, Cedarfield and Political Living had won second place at best workplaces. So it was our job to communicate to the Times Dispatch that although we weren't given the award, somehow this announcement was made. At first we thought about it, do we even let them know? The article is already in the newspaper and it's been announced, but we decided to do it and let them know, and good for us, it was legit. We actually were the winners of second place. I wasn't the one who had to break it to Country Club of Virginia that they didn't win. And now we proudly can um, have that on our logo and on our banners on um, the website, and we'll have our awards coming soon. So, in addition to being the number two, we have a clue. We're the most clued in organization, and I think that should be our tagline for the next several weeks. So, just wanted to share that with you. If you haven't seen the article, I have probably 14 or 15 in my office, and I pull them out every time I need a little pick me up, so I'm happy to share. Thank you. All right, I'm going to invite Emily up, and she's going to share some new introductions and some other marketing related things. Thank you. Just want to take a second and look at you all. <laughs> I am so thrilled about this room. <laughs> um, and really just thrilled about the last several months, uh, the last several days. Um, I was so, so pleased uh, to see everyone come yesterday to the baseball event. This, uh, today, to see you all here, and then, uh, of course, the mural project tonight. Um, I just, Steve Nelson told me to, to um, what did you say to me, to, uh, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> behave myself. <laughs> That's what he said. And I just can't, I'm so excited. <laughs> Cedarfield this month. 
So I am absolutely thrilled to share that news, and I wanted to say a sincere thank you. This is a full team effort. I see Ms. Logan in the back there. I'll get back to Logan in a second, but wanted to send a thank you to Lori Andrews, Bob Angelotti, Jack Johnson, Sharon Brown, Steve Nelson, and all of their teams on the maintenance and the housekeeping teams, Mariah Robinson, Florence Brooks, Sissy Livesey, and David Taylor. Um, really, again, this is a full team effort, so we have folks in the business office and lifestyles and wellness, maintenance and housekeeping who are all helping us get through that process. And then, of course, all of you who are rounding us out and really helping people feel welcome here um, and getting oriented. And then, of course, none of this would be possible without the rest of my team, which is Maria Edwards, who is uh, holding down the fort and taking phone calls in the office, and Logan Hardin, who's in the back of the room, our sales counselor. So I just want to take a moment to give them all a round of applause because we have done a lot of work in the last few months to get our occupancy back to So, the next question is, well, Emily, what's left to sell? Well, there's 13 one bedrooms to sell. Um, so we have two cottages and three apartments that are currently in process. So we have families who have said yes to them and are going through the uh, medical and financial assessments. And then the unreserved available units right now are uh, 13 one bedrooms, one one bedroom with den, and two two bedrooms that we are making our way through the wait list to, uh, to find the, the right next people. So, with all of that information, I'm very, very excited to say that we are currently at 95% reserved and occupied. The last piece of information to share with you is coming up in July. On July 17th, we're going to have our next marketing event, and it'll take place in this beautiful room. And that is the kickoff to our Get Ready series. What we keep hearing from people as we call down the wait list, and I'm sure these words have come out of all of your mouths as well, is Emily, I'm just not ready. So we're gonna face that head on this year, and we're going to host a Get Ready series, which is a series of marketing events that are geared specifically to getting folks moving on their downsizing, on making sure that financially they qualify for the community, and just getting them to a place so that when we make that call, they are coming to Cedarfield. So our next event again is July 17th, and that's gonna be focused on downsizing. And then we'll have future ones on floor planning, um, and a resource panel, so that we have all these different resources in Richmond for people to know about to help them with all of these efforts to come to Cedarfield. And there will be a follow-up donation event after that um, in collaboration with Next Chapter Solutions, which is one of the moving companies we work with, Thrifty Sisters, which is a, um, a local charity, and File Secure RBA so that people can get rid of all that paperwork they've been holding on to. So that will be July 17th in the Fellowship Hall. We'll send out more information when we get closer to that date. And that is my update. Does anyone have any questions?
in our healthcare center. So there were not any major areas of concern. There were a couple of um, action plans that we are working through with our QAPI team and our team um, in healthcare and health services to improve on some of our processes um, that are upstairs. But again, no real um, areas of concern with that. And that's all I have to report. Any questions for me in healthcare? Yes, sir. So my healthcare census is 51 um, as of today. So that means that there are 51 residents that are um, living between the three health um, three households in healthcare. So I have a um, a, a vacancy in both of my long term care households, um, and then seven vacant apartments in our. Um, I'm not going to say Medicare, our skilled or short-term household. Uh, the apartments that are in our long-term care households, they are slotted for residents who need that level of care. Um, but in our short-term household, there are those um, seven vacancies for anybody that may need that. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Right. Lauren will talk about her AL report and her um, vacancies and what she's got going on. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Lauren Burnett and I am the Assistant Living Administrator for Health Services. So to answer first with the occupancy questions for us, um, the only actual open and unreserved apartment for assisted living is part of memory care right now. So there's one available, but everything else is either, you know, got someone residing there or is reserved for someone to move in. So we're in good shape on the assisted living side. But I am here today to actually go over two different things with you. Over the next two days, assisted living is undergoing what's called oversight. And essentially that is a chart review to make sure that we are in compliance. So we have approximately 20 residents who will be reviewed. And this is done on a quarterly basis in preparation for our licensing survey, which should occur around late fall of this year. So hopefully next town hall, I'll have updates on the results of that. And in addition, I wanted to talk about shower doors on the fourth floor of assisted living. So since the renovations for fourth floor, I know there have been concerns about the design of the showers on the fourth floor, just due to when it was installed, unfortunately it caused leakage into the bathroom floors. So the temporary solution was for maintenance to install um, essentially rubber dams across the threshold of the showers to um, reduce that leakage. However, the permanent solution was to install glass shower doors, um, really to truly fix it. So where we stand with that progress is we have an approved design for those doors and two out of the total of 27 showers on that fourth floor have this door installed and is functional. This was resident tested, resident approved for this design and moving forward we will be installing in groups of five until we're completed with all 27 out of 27. So the first group of five showers have been measured and they're being manufactured as we speak. So we're moving through that process to be able to um, get everyone living on fourth floor with those um, showers or at least the option to have them. Are there any questions for me? Okay, welcome back to Town Hall everyone. season, we have allergy season, so 
what I would ask you to do is remain, you know, cognizant about your distance, keep washing your hands. Um, if you're gonna be in a big group, again, you know, keep your distance. Um, if you're out in the community, protect yourself, wear a mask, it's, it's okay. Um, I also wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, the hot weather, and I know for a fact it's gonna be uh, hot, like 96 or something I was hearing this morning. So just over the weekend, you know, it's beautiful and, you know, everything's blooming as Trish said. But please remember to hydrate. You know, we all have these fancy water bottles, some get a little bit heavier than others, but I would say grab a, you know, a water bottle and have that with you. Um, wear your sunscreen, sun hats. Um, you know, it's, it's always cool. I have a pretty nice office and a view of the secret garden. And I get to watch the residents sit there and enjoy, you know, the sun and the new gazebo that's out there. I have a resident who I see, she's out there sunbathing, you know, and I think, man, this is living. So I would just ask you to protect yourselves, you know, hydrate, use your sunscreen, wear your sun hat, because then, you know, there are such things as skin cancers and various, you know, small melanomas that you can get. So um, if you don't have any questions for me, I'll move on to the next person. Yes, ma'am.
Um, so the generators in the process, the other good thing about that, the electric charging stations are going in as well. Um, they did start wiring that, and then once we get the control panel for the generator, uh, the, like, the car charging station in that generator will be up and running, so that's good. Um, and I just realized that um, hurricane season is starting, and we're starting to get emails about preparing for that, so getting the generator done now is a great thing, um, just for precautionary measures. The other thing is the clubhouse. The clubhouse, we started that a few weeks ago, and we're on a tight deadline to get that done. I feel pretty confident we're gonna make our deadline at the end of the month, probably sooner. Um, the cabins came in quicker than anticipated, and they're installing those as, as we speak. Um, other things that we've done so far down there, the floor was ripped out, and the uh, kitchen was completely gutted for the cabinets, and we're redoing the bathrooms, and they're getting retitled as well. And then we'll have floor and paint to do. So that project's moving right run along pretty good. We're gonna be doing some outdoor stuff, um, landscaping on the outside, just to give a little protection of, of the, um, the, the building itself down there. Uh, we have to remove a few trees, and then we'll do some you know, nice landscaping to make it look pretty. And the last thing I've been working on is the automatic doors. Our automatic doors on all the main entrances are about 30 years, they're 30 years old, and so we need to update those. And so um, that's been approved. Um, that's the lead time on that will, um, is probably six or eight months. We won't see that full fall. But um, at the same time, the, I was asked to look at doors for door operators for the residents that need uh, the assistance of the doors to automatically open. Uh, there's a bunch of doors that we're doing. This is doing this out of my head. There's two up, up in the dining area before you go into the health center. Those two bathrooms right there, they're gonna have door operators on it. The atrium cafe on the, on the very first floor where the bistro is, the men's and women's bathroom, we're putting them on there. Um, and then we're also looking at assisted living, adding two doors that go from assisted living at the poppy place. And then we're adding two door operators that go from assisted living out to the secret garden. And I went and looked at it with the contractor and, and I saw residents going through it. And, it's critical that we put them in there at those spots because it gives you more ability to get through and enjoy some of these um, beautiful spaces that we have. Um, and that's all I have. I'm glad to be here and glad to help. And um, I doubled my workload for the last five months, but uh, I like the challenge and, and it's nice to meet the people that I've met here so far. Thank you.
they can have any recyclable or compostable uh, single-use wares. Uh, we have a, now we have just about for all the items that we have, uh, entree-wise and salad-wise, we got a compostable uh, platter, a 24 ounce, so we're going to be utilizing that. And as we come up with uh, little ideas within the dining yeah. committee and ourselves, we'll be asking everybody, uh, you know, for instance, if you're able to bring your own shopping bags and bring for your carryout orders, please do. Uh, if there's other uh, things that we can uh, you know, help save the environment and, and why not save, uh, now that I'm responsible for a budget, save some costs there too, that would be a big help. We are looking forward uh, to this wonderful space and being able to have those large events, just like uh, we, we had yesterday out, outside and other things too, and I promise you, Sharon, uh, no fruit punch in Thank this room. You. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me? All right, I'll be staying after the meeting. Thank you all. Good afternoon. I'm Florence Brooks, Director of Resident Life and Wellness. It's great to be here with you this afternoon. I have several things I'm looking forward to sharing with you. The first of which is, last week we published the updated resident handbook. Copies of this are available on the app, or if you would like a hard copy, just let Mariah Robinson know. She's not um, the resident said you don't need to print us a copy unless we ask for it. So. But it's no problem to print you a copy, and we can three-hole punch it and even provide you a binder if you desire to have one. I do have extra, a few extra copies with me this afternoon if you would like a hard copy. Many residents like to access the app through their, um, through their computer, and you can enlarge the pages and read it even. Um, it's more accessible for people who have low vision um, needs. So just keep that in mind. I hope you'll look at this. And throughout the year, we'll share with you different items from the handbook to bring your attention to it. Delonte, come on up. I'm so delighted to introduce you this afternoon <laughs> to Delonte Russell. Delonte, we're so glad to have Delonte as our new event assistant. Delonte um, came on board and is in the Resident Life uh, and Wellness Department reporting to Katrin. Um, he has been for the last 20 years at Capital One doing event setups, a graduate of ODU, and now a Cedarfield team member. So please join me in welcoming the audience. Thank you. If you have events coming up, just 
reach out to Katrin, um, who works with directors of Delonte on um, setups and um, making those arrangements. As Steph has already mentioned, Juneteenth will be next Wednesday. It's the 19th of every June. The holiday's name is a blending of the words June and 19th, as it dates back to June 19th, 1865, when Major General Gordon Granger ordered the final enforcement of the Emancipation Proclamation in Texas at the end of the American Civil War. Here's the Texas people here. This day is observed annually to mark the end of slavery in the United States. Juneteenth will be a holiday for Cedarfield employees, but we wanted to recognize the importance of this day, and we've arranged for a living history interpreter, Charmaine Crowell, to be with us on Monday, the 17th, at 11 o'clock in this room. Charmaine will be portraying Sojourner Truth. Sojourner Truth was an American abolitionist and activist for American, African American civil rights, women's rights, and alcohol temperance. She was born into slavery in New York, but escaped with her infant daughter to freedom in 1826. Monday's program will share with those who gather one small bit of the journey to freedom by enslaved Americans. Following the presentation, Charmaine will answer questions that may surface for those who gather. Charmaine is a gifted historian, teacher, and actress her presentation is sure to make an impact. I do hope you'll make a note for Monday, the 17th at 11 o'clock, right in this room to meet Charmaine and hear Sojourner Truth's story. This month, our emphasis for Pathways to Wellness is social connection. Many folks say that Cedarfield's greatest strength is its community. The genuine interest of our resident population in meeting getting to know and spending time with their neighbors. Research has shown that one of the cornerstones to successful aging is concern for continued friendships, positive interpersonal relationships, satisfaction with spouses, children, and family life, and social responsibility in the form of volunteer work and civic involvement. We're not created to live our lives under a rock make connections, build relationships, be interested in people, and flourish. If you don't know someone's name, introduce yourself. If a new neighbor moves in, knock on the door and say welcome. There are many events scheduled throughout the month for people to gather and enjoy the company of others. A few of those events for June include on Monday the 17th, again, that afternoon at three, a happy hour, in the resident gardens, which is behind the wellness building with guitarist Andrew McGruder. Bingo nights on the evening of the 13th and 24th in the atrium. And then another way to connect with people is through volunteering. We have so many great things going on with volunteering, but something I want to highlight is you may have noticed we have a lot of new young faces around the campus this summer. In fact, we have seven high school students who are volunteering this summer. Students from Godwin, students from um, Tucker, um, Collegiate, and Brother Avenue are here in the clinic, in assisted living and memory care, in um, independent living, and then assisting in various areas throughout the community. So when you see a young person who has a Cedarfield tag, don't hesitate to stop and welcome them and thank them for their time here this summer. Just a few final things to share with you about volunteers. We have a group of residents who this past Monday assembled 30 kits for the United Methodist Commission on Relief in Assisted Living. The Cedarville Knitters made and delivered 78 items to the Web of Hope last month. The sentimental sewers continue to sew bears and blankets for patients at St. Mary's. And we continue to collect pop tops in the mailroom at Meredith's office. These tops are taken for Ronald McDonald House. For more information on volunteering, see Meredith Eckel, our volunteer coordinator. Her office is in the atrium across from Shop 2300. 
And the final thing is Election Day. The primary are this Tuesday the 18th, and we'll have that right here in this fellowship hall. From 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., if you've not already voted, just remember you can walk right down here, bring your identification. To help with the flow of crowds, we ask that you not park in front of town center for a prolonged period of time. There will be a shovel available throughout the day. Just call the concierge desk for that. Here's one final tip from the list of tips for successful aging. I think it's a good one no matter your age. Are you ready? Focus on the positives and the good people in your life rather than on the negative things that may happen to you. Thank you. Thank you, Florence. Now I will invite Charles Wickham, our speakeasy operator, to share some information about a special event for y'all later this week. <laughs> Do you know the password? <laughs> have you heard it? Well, tomorrow night you better have, have it if you think that you can find Cedarfield Speakeasy. It's a hidden place somewhere in the hub area. Come and join us between 4 and 6 tomorrow. This is a little fundraiser for our garden fund. The Garden Angels have got some wonderful plans for our community, which is already beautiful and they want to make it even better. And come and hear what plans they have in store. We are asking for $25 per ticket, but you know, if you would like to be generous and help the Garden Fund even more, we would definitely take more. <laughs> We're going to have all sorts of uh, dry beverages, libations, as well as wonderful hors d'oeuvres. So it's up to you to come and join us tomorrow in the hub from four to six and see if you can find the password for the speakeasy. On another note, this past month in May, we had the month of giving. And I just wanna say a huge thank you, thank you, thank you. Hopefully you've seen the slides that have been uh, going around showing all of the various funds that you supported throughout the month of May. Uh, you always amaze me. It's just wonderful. Between our entire corporation of Pinnacle Living and all four communities, uh, we raised over $74,000 in just the month of May for such special projects. And, uh, and very special events. So thank you for the month of May and all that you did, but tomorrow afternoon, what's going on? Speak easy. Speak easy. Come dress to impress. <laughs> thank you, Charles. Just a couple of updates on different things. Reminder, pendants. If you don't have a pendant, you can get one at any time. Um, we would like for you to see either Bonnie or Anne in the clinic for your pendant if you don't have one. Pendants are not only for you in case of an emergency, but they're for friends and neighbors that might be having an emergency event as well. So if you don't have a pendant, some of you don't, I know, please make sure you stop by the clinic. Um, we actually might have a piece of paper in the back of the room and write down your name and provide it to the clinic if you're interested in the pendant and you have, don't have one as of yet. On the same line of pendants, um, we issued emergency cards to be kept in your wallets next to your insurance cards in case something happens to you when you're away from Cedarfield. If you don't have one of those cards, we'd like to know that as well so that we can provide you one just in case of an emergency away from campus. Snake update. I'm not a big snake fan. I don't know if we have any snake fans in the room. Um, but last month we were dealing with some snakes on uh, the lane in particular, and I think that those snakes have decided to go live someplace else because I haven't had any concerns brought to my attention um, lately. If you do live in the cottage or if you're walking on the grounds and you happen to see a snake, please let us know. We want to make sure that um, people aren't afraid to do things like that because of an encounter they might have with snakes. 
safety on campus. So I don't know that everybody knows this, but my husband works in risk management. And when we walk at night, we wear vests similar to the gentleman in the back of the room. Cars see us coming. Um, when you walk on campus, especially at dawn or dusk, it would be a good idea to wear something reflective so that either residents or team members who are coming to work and driving on campus can see you as well. If you're not as steady as you used to be, I would suggest that maybe you walk with a buddy and also keep your pendants with you just in case of an emergency. Cell phones work just as well, but we want to make sure that residents who walk on campus are safe doing that. When you drive on campus, we want you to be safe as well. Please stop at the stop signs and look at the speed limit when you're coming and going to ensure that, again, residents who are walking on campus Visitors who are here enjoying the grounds and team members are safe too. Quick construction update. I said early on that we're not 100% in this room. You might notice that it's bright and beautiful in here, but our darkening shades have not been installed yet. So those will arrive within the next several weeks so that we can show movies in this room again and also that we can ensure that there aren't any glares for its performances and programs. The hearing loop has been installed um, and will help with sound. It's under the carpet, um, but we are in the final um, stages of installing the rest of the sound and audiovisual equipment. So Productive AV is here and will probably be here for another week or so, putting final touches and finishing touches on the sound system and the AV system. I know that many of you have asked, can we learn how to use that? And the answer is yes, because often many of our residents facilitate programs in this room and it will be helpful for them to know how to use the lights and the sound system. So once it's installed, we'll be setting up some of those sessions for those who volunteer with us, as well as having our team members brought up to date on how that works as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, finally, after the meeting, if anybody would like to see, we brought some show and tell um, on the side of the, the, the fellowship hall over there. This is a sample of the new windows that are going to be installed when we do our replacements with the EFIS program and, and process. We want you to come out and come up and try it and let us know what you think. The um, windows have all been ordered, or a good quantity of them have been ordered, and again, this is a several year year phase process that we will be replacing all of the windows in the main building. So wanted to make sure that we showed you those and what they look like as well. Um, we are at the end of our fiscal year, May 31st is our last year. I'm waiting for our final numbers to come in. As soon as they do, um, we will look through those and David and I will do an updated uh, presentation for our end of year budgeted numbers probably at our next month's meeting. Any questions for me before I turn it over to Kate? There are a couple of questions. The hearing loop, what does that do and how do you access it? So the hearing loop is a system of wires that are under the carpet that are adjusted with your hearing aid. So Dr. Ogilvy, who is our hearing specialist here, will work with you, or if you need information, we would rather work with an audiologist outside to adjust your hearing aid so that when you come into the room, sound is not an issue for you. Many residents um, experience the hearing loop in, in churches and other types of auditoriums, and we've heard very positive things about how well it works, especially if you have a hearing aid. Chaplain. I have a variety of questions. First of all, when new rules are implemented, how does our original so it, it depends on what the rule is. Okay. Um, <coughs> the seven dollar fee for uh, medication. So that was there's not a seven dollar fee for medications. There is a repackaging oh. fee for medications okay. if you live in the assisted living or health care expense of the building. If you are a veteran, there is no charge for that. And um, those were introduced about five years ago to a majority of the residents that lived here. So that, again, happened a while ago, um, and that information should have been given to you 
when the decision was made to go with Remedy? I'm not getting the word. Anytime I sign a contract, okay, be it five years ago or ten years ago, if there's something that comes out that's new from the time that I signed the contract, then it doesn't pertain to me. That's not necessarily true. And we can talk about specifics after the meeting. We are an organization that changes over time. We can't be held to contracts that were written 20, 25 years ago and things change in 25 years. Well, it doesn't affect me personally because I'm a vet. Yep. But, you know, that's going to be very expensive for a lot of people. I mean, I'm already taking four medications, just uh, uh, not counting the PRN ones and injectables and those type of things. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a concern for a lot of people. I can take an attitude, but by the time I get there, I probably won't have any money to be taken care of anyway. But um, it's, it's an issue of concern. If, if there are questions about remedy and billing, happy to meet with you on an individual basis after this meeting. Thank you for bringing that up, though. Any other questions before Caitlin does our mission moment? All right. Cedarfield, 
32 nursing students from Enrico County Schools that came for training in April, and 30 nursing students from Enrico County Schools who came for training in May, and a group of resident volunteers who went to Goochling Cares and sorted clothing for the clothing closet in the month of May and who plan to return again in the month of September. There's a lot of wonderful work that goes on in our community and all of our clinical living communities as part of our desire to not only impact the lives of our residents, but the lives of people beyond the community. I have written notes on this. I'm gonna put them up here. You're welcome to take a copy or ask me to email you one. If you didn't receive this and you would like a copy, Amanda Kelly, Amanda Kelly and Charles Wickham have additional copies. If you want to talk about social accountability, feel free to ask me. Thank you. We're exactly uh, a minute and three seconds over, so I'll make this quick. I want to tell you about the Residence Council. I'm Frank Miller, the president of the Residence Council. And um, what, as you may know, there are 13 communities in the Residence Council, and I'd like to tell you what some of them are doing. First thing is an open position. Uh, the Environmental Committee has a recycling subcommittee. And unfortunately, we do not have anybody to chair that recycling subcommittee. It's really a good group of people, and particularly new residents. If there's anyone that's really interested in recycling, Please talk to me because we would love to show you that committee and introduce you to some of those people. The communication committee started out trying to make maps of the healthcare area and all the names of it and nobody could figure out where things are. And uh, they have those maps now. They also have taken on the third floor where a great deal of activities are completed and are now doing the entire building. And hopefully within the month, those are going out to publication and those maps will be made available to you. There's a second thing, um, they also are, have people that are going to read all of the publications, the informer and other publications, to people that are visually impaired. And I'm hoping to work with Galante to see if we can put that on 974 for those people. Dining committee, the Mary Ann Johnson and, and Grayson Miller uh, gave a good talk to the dining committee last month on helpful eating, so facts, those kind of things. And he brought up a lot of new issues, but what was most important is Chef Chiron was there, and we found that there's a great deal of things that you can be, feel good about that are already being done by our dining staff. Library committee, please keep reading the book, missing book list. They're not coming back as fast as they did at one time. Uh, wellness and leisure, I hope everybody enjoyed the uh, Baseball night last night, it was exciting. The Wapkin Committee has prepared a new brochure for new residents, and just to give you an idea how thorough it is, they have a connection squad, which will come and help new residents put in their televisions and, and internet. They have park buddies that will take you for a walk in the park if you have not been there, and show you around the park and help you get your own key. So the committee is busy, it's a pleasure to tell you what they're doing. Are there any questions that I might ask you? Great. <laughs> In closing, just want to thank um, both JD and Seth in the back of the room for making this meeting possible this afternoon and for all they've done in the construction pro process. Appreciate them, they're our go-to guys. If something needs to be done, they've ensured that it's happened and it's happened on time. In addition to that, he's not here to introduce, but we have a summer intern by the name of Nathan Saskill. He is a rising senior at Christopher Newport University, and you will probably see him running around the building for the next 10 weeks. I just saw him in the courtyard. Please stop him and introduce him and let him know that you're thankful that he's here. Thank you all for what you do for each other, for our team members, and for Cedar Hill, thank you for coming today. And also, we have one more question. Go ahead, Jacqueline. One more thing. For older residents that have been here, or long-term residents that have been here, and new residents, our fire alarm is very sensitive. I've only been back for about a month, and on the first floor, there's been about four alarms. So if you're cooking popcorn or whatever, realize that the microwave that you're using now Burn, but it needs to work here or where it didn't at home. Just be aware of that sensitivity. So for those
those of you who are watching at home, it was a public safety announcement. If you are cooking in the building, know that um, if you're new, that our microwaves don't cook necessarily at the same speed or temperature as yours at home. Just be careful when microwaving and cooking in your apartments. Thank you for that. Have a wonderful day.